Hey everybody, welcome to another short Avid tutorial. Uh, the topic today is something that doesn't come up in a ton of workflows, but when it does, it can be a little confusing. And so I've gotten some requests to talk about this. So doing a quick little overview of it, and that is relinking media and specifically relinking things to original clips. There's two different aspects of this I wanna cover and I'll cover them both quickly. The first is relinking files that just have gone offline and how to do that. And the second is going to be if you have a sequence that you've been editing with transcoded lower resolution media and you want to relink the sequence to your original full res, full quality media, how to do that. So let's start with the first one, which is just relinking clips. This is not something you actually deal with a ton in Avid. It's actually pretty good with this. It's something that I encountered way more when I was working in Final Cut or in Premiere. But I'll say the tools for dealing with it aren't super user friendly. So if you do get something that's showing up offline, then it can be a little tricky to know what to do with it. And to be clear, the topic of the tutorial here, I'm talking about it dealing with original media that has gone offline. Obviously, if your transcoded media has gone offline, what that means is it's not finding that Avid Media Files folder or the media isn't in that or the media database has gotten corrupted or something like that. I talk a little bit about that in some other tutorials. If someone wants a specific tutorial on that, let me know and I'll put one together. But this is for original media. So here I have some media that I linked into a project and you can see most of these clips show up, but I have one that's offline. And this is because I told it to go offline. And a reason that you might do this is, here's another clip from the same shoot. And this was shot with the Sony FS7. And one of the things about the FS7 is it records all these tracks, even if you're not really using all of them. So in this case, we were just using the video, we we're recording audio separately, and then there's a separate data track. And so if I wanna deal with this clip, you can see over here, it's got all these different tracks you'd be trying to worry about, most of which in this case are empty. So what I usually like to do before I transcode this for editing purposes is just get rid of any tracks I'm not gonna use that I know there's nothing useful in, just so I'm not trying to keep track of them or worry about them later and just have it clogging up my timeline with empty stuff. The process for this, I'll go through it just quickly here because it's relevant to this, is I'm gonna unlink the media first. So I'm telling it, hey, ignore that media clip, this is offline. Once it's offline, now I can go modify this right click, modify clip, and I'm going to say I wanna set tracks, and it shows all the tracks in that clip, and I'm just gonna turn off the ones that I don't wanna use and say, hey, for our purposes, just pretend that this is just a video clip. So even though the original media has all those other tracks, I want to ignore all of them. So there's these other audio tracks here, and then down at the far bottom right here, you can see there's that data track that showed up. That's the D1 here. So hit okay, and you'll see now it says this is just a V1 track. So now all I wanna do is make it relink to that original clip that I linked in, except just pay attention to the video this time. So to do this, I'm gonna go, as you would expect, to relink. Remember I unlinked it in modify. To me, it would make sense if the relink was in the same submenu, but it's not, it's right here. So go relink. And the one thing here is you just have to make sure your settings are correct so it will find it correctly. And sometimes these are different than the default. So a couple of things you wanna check are in this relink by section, I think the default is tape name or source file ID. And I wanna set this because I wanna relink it by the source file name. It knew what the file name was, it may not have the file ID. And down here where it says relink to, I'm gonna set any video format. The default here is this. In this case, this is 4K footage that I had transcoded to 1080p for the offline creative edit. And so if it tried to only relink to things that are in that video format 1080p, it's gonna say I can't find anything because there isn't a clip in 1080p. So I'm just gonna say any video format in case there are any different resolutions there. And last thing is I'm gonna uncheck this box that says match case when comparing source names. I don't care if it showed up capitalized or uncapitalized. In this case, the source name is just numbers, so it wouldn't matter, but depending on your naming system, it might. So I would just uncheck that. And I'll hit that, say okay. And it's gonna look and it's gonna find this and relink it. So great, that worked. Okay, so that's in that particular scenario. The other thing that can happen is if you maybe moved a file. So let me unlink a clip again for us here. Okay, that's back offline now. Maybe this file got moved to a different drive or you're trying to connect it to a drive with a different name or something like that. And it's just, it's not working or maybe the relink isn't working for some reason, who knows. I do wanna show you just one other trick you can try that sometimes will work. And that's just basically kind of remind Avid for lack of a better phrase where this stuff is and that this media is in that folder. So I'm gonna highlight this clip, right click, and I'm gonna go back to my source browser as if I wanted to link in some new media. And I'm going to find where I got that media from. By the way, I have occasionally had Avid crash when I do this. 
The most likely time for any editing system to crash is when you're trying to import media or export media. So you should always save right before that. Always command S. You'll see no little asterisks here, which tells me that those bins have been saved. Okay, back into my source browser. And I'm just gonna find where those files came from. They were in here, it's in the picture. And I just kind of reminded it that this folder exists and had this original media in it. And you notice as soon as I did, it said, wait a minute, I see that file that I was looking for, and there it is. So that's a backup option you can try if the normal relink process isn't working. The normal relink is actually more reliable, but this is a way that sometimes I've found does work if you're having issues. Again, you're not really dealing with relinking media a lot in Avid unless you're like moving files around between a lot of different drives and going back to your original media all the time and stuff. So it's not something I deal with a ton, but it's good to have those workflows for it. So that's relinking the original clip. So these are all, you can see LinkedIn and we've got all these original clips in here. The other question that comes up, and this was the specific one that somebody had sent in, was I have this edited sequence here that I edited with my transcoded media. So this is working with these transcodes that are at low res. This is at DNX HD LB, which is the old DNX HD 36, the lowest bit rate version. And the first thing I want to just point out for you is part of the reason there's not really a need to do this people have this misconception that these transcoded low res version like oh my god my sequence is going to look so terrible i can't show that to anybody else i have the same clip over here the transcoded version and this is the original version over here the full res 4k version and i'm just going to pop between them i didn't find exactly the same frame of the shot you'll see it's a few frames earlier or later because it tilts but you can't really see any difference between these. So in terms of your offline creative edits or anything like that, don't get hung up on, oh my God, I'm not working with the original 4K or 6K or 8K, whatever it is. Your transcoded stuff looks fine. Honestly, most of your audiences wouldn't know if you never went back to the original media, even at the end. You still should do that, particularly if you're going to be doing coloring, visual effects and stuff. You really want to have all that original data. But my point is like, I am never bothering relinking something back to the original clips to show somebody an edit or anything like that. The only time I might potentially do that is when I'm finishing. And actually in the workflows I use, I usually end up finishing and doing my color grading and stuff in DaVinci Resolve. So I never even relink my sequences back to the original media. But there are some workflows where you wanna do that, particularly if you're doing your actual finishing in Avid, doing all your color grading and finishing everything here, you do wanna get back to those original clips. So I'll show you how to do that. But that was just a little public service announcement like, don't worry about your transcodes like, oh my God, I'm compressing it down and the color is going to be bad and the resolution, it looks fine. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I got this sequence. You can see it's edited with the transcodes. Got these dot new whatever here. And I want to just relink this back to these original full res 4K clips. So what I'm going to do here is a couple of things. Like I said, I don't use this workflow. I rarely relink back to the originals. I was trying to think the last time I actually did this for a project was maybe 15 years ago. But I have done this with Red Media, with FS7 Media for this demo. It works. There may be other ways to do this that somebody who uses this kind of workflow would have some really cool tricks for it. So I'm not in any way advocating this is the best way to do it. I'm just saying this is the way I know how to do it and it works. So if you're looking for how can you make this happen, this works. So I got my sequence here with the transcoded media. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually take all my transcoded media offline because I want it to think this whole sequence is offline, that it's missing all the media. So easiest way to do this is I'm going to go into Finder and just change the name of my Avid Media Files folder to something else temporarily so that all the transcoded Avid Media just disappears and Avid can't find it. So here's my drive and you can see I've got Avid Media Files here and all I usually like to do is just put a little X in front of it and that's now offline. You can't see that transcoded media because it can't find the Avid Media Files folder. Remember Avid's very particular about how that files labeled and where it is and stuff. So it's easy to get this stuff offline. It's easy to bring this back online too. If I just change that name back, Avid will immediately find it. Boom, sequence is back. So I've got my sequence offline here now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same relink option, but I have to set something else up first. And this is very important. This is where people miss a step. I'll show you where the relink shows up. So here's my sequence. Go to relink and I want to relink the selected items, which is this sequence here. And here's the important thing. I'm going to set this and say relink to selected items in all open bins. And there's two important things there. One is selected items. The other is all open bins. So what I need to make sure is that any media that might be in this sequence 
is in an open bin and is selected. In this case, it's very simple. All my original raw footage is in this single bin, so that bin's open. I'm going to Command A to just select it all. But if you had your original raw media stored across several different bins, you have to make sure they're all open and go into all of them and select everything in all of those. Command A, select all of it to make sure it finds all of those. Okay, now I'm going to right click on this, go to relink, selected items in all open bins, hit OK. And you can see it creates a new sequence, same name as my original sequence, but now it says relinked. And I'll double click on that, and there it is. You can see it's got the same thing here. You'll also see, if you were paying close attention, the clips down here now have the original names. They don't say .new.01 because they aren't the transcodes, the original raw files. And also, they've got this little icon on them showing that there's something happening to the video here. In this case, it's showing that it's a resize from the 4K media down to this 1080. So now I've got my original sequence reconnected to all the original media, and I can do with that whatever I want or need to do. If I'm doing coloring or visual effects or something in Avid, this would be the sequence I want to do that to. So that's relinking in Avid. I uh, hope that was helpful. If you have further questions about that or anything else, drop a line in the comments and let me know. As always, like and subscribe, and see you next time.